Statistics and Excel, standard error, margin of error, hypothesis test, and confident interval introduction example problem. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one, because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, the answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We'll construct this from a blank worksheet, practicing our Excel tools as we build it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building, looking at concepts building up to the application of hypothesis testing and confidence intervals, the tool techniques, the two techniques typically used when we're trying to find something out about a larger population by, in essence, drawing samples from that population Remember, our general concepts, including the central limit theorem, are gonna help us, hopefully, to put this information in the form of, say, a bell-shaped curve, because the bell-shaped curve is something that we know about and can define quite simply with basically two numbers, one being the middle point, the mean or the average, and the second being the spread, the standard deviation. That's what we need. But remember, the population itself might not have a bell shape uh, to it. It might be skewed to the left. It might be skewed to the right. It might have a uniform type of distribution. But if we took all possible samples, all combinations of samples, and we took the average of all those combinations of samples, it would tend towards a bell shape. So that's what we're looking towards oftentimes in our practice, remembering then that the mean is usually pretty straightforward because when we take the sample, the mean is gonna to tend towards that central point. That makes sense. It's the standard deviation that often gets confusing, could have basically different names that we apply to it because we could have standard deviation of the population, which might not be in a bell-shaped situation. We could have the standard deviation of the sample, but that still might not be what we're looking for because we want the standard deviation which would approximate the X bars as if we took the average of all possible samples because that's the one that's gonna to tend towards the bell shape. That's the idea here. So we're gonna be looking uh, at some sample data. We'll be analyzing this formula once again, which is the standard deviation of the X bars. We'll look at different N calculations to see what the standard error and margin of error calculations would be. We'll practice some Excel formatting to see uh, the probabilities and, and then write out the probabilities. And then once we have this information, we will graph and we'll take a look at some examples of differences uh, between the graphs between an N, which is sample size of 75 versus uh, 1000. And we'll be able to change these so you can change the graph. And then we'll get into our introduction concepts of the two ways that we might use these one being the hypothesis testing, which is often useful if we have an idea of what we think the middle point should be and possibly knowing the standard deviation. And then the confidence interval, which might be more useful, for example, in situations where we don't know or have an idea of what the middle point uh, should be. That's what we're trying to find out and we just don't really know. All right. Remember that the practice uh, tab has the pre-formatted cells, so you can work through here if you want to do less Excel formatting. We're going to be in our blank sheet, 
doing our Excel formatting as we go. All right, so our standard starting point is to uh, select the entire worksheet, right click on it, format the cells. We're gonna go to currency, negative numbers bracketed, no dollar sign. Let's get rid of the decimals to start off with. We will add them as needed as we go. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna go to the home tab, font group. I'm gonna make everything bold. You might not need to do that, but I like to do that because I think it makes it easier to see in a screencast situation. All right, we want the average uh, item cost. I'm gonna call this mu. This is gonna be the data that we're imagining that we're given. So we're imagining that uh, we're selling something and what is the average cost of the thing that we're selling? Possibly uh, it has a price range, possibly we're constructing something in a construction situation and what would be the average cost that we would have. I'm gonna go to the insert tab. We're gonna go to the symbols and I'm gonna choose the mu as the symbol, insert it, and then okay. So that what mu represents the mean. I like to say enter first and then go back into it. Otherwise the formatting gets a little funny sometimes. And I'm gonna call this the average item, average item cost. So we're gonna assume, or our theory, and you could think of this as kind of a hypothesis, or last year we can say that the average item was 7.99, we're going to say. Then N, capital M for us, is going to be represent uh, the items sold in a year. And so that's going to be the population for us. And we're going to say it's 34,000. And then the STD, the standard deviation of the population, we're going to assume is known. Notice that sometimes you don't know the standard deviation of the population, but we're going to start off with it known and then we'll get into examples where it is not known and then we're going to say the number of std standard deviations or the z we're going to say uh, is going to be two in other words we want to we want to look at an interval where there's two standard deviations around basically that middle point that's the concept we're going to let's make this i'm going to say this is our intro data so we're gonna to go to the home tab, I'm gonna font group, and I'm gonna make it orange. That's gonna be what I, what stands for is like the baseline data that we're given. All right, and then, and then we have the formula. I'm just gonna pull the formula over. I don't know what this is doing. K paso, what happened with that? I'm gonna copy this over here and we'll just copy that. This is our formula. I've shown you how to, in prior presentations how to, you can type this formula in. Uh, if you if you want to make your own formulas, uh, you can go to the insert and into the equation. And then I think if you just ink out the equation, you can do it that way and you can write in the formula and so on. I'm just making stuff up and if something's wrong. You can circle it and then choose the right thing and it draws it up top. So even with a mouse, you can kind of make the formula. So we'll put that there. And then I'm going to say, let's, we also want to say, uh, the margin of error actually let's leave it at that for now so I'm gonna pull this up and then we're gonna say let's make this a little bit larger maybe and this so this fits in there okay I'm gonna make a skinny C skinny C and then we're gonna build our table so I'm gonna put the table down here I'm gonna put an N we're gonna calculate this standard standard and then I'm gonna put underneath it error just note when I'm building a table I could put standard error over here and then and then basically uh, I want to wrap the text but that makes a fat cell which kind of throws things off so if I was actually going to insert a table I would want to do that that way because then I'd have the proper headers but in this case I'm not going to make it into a table so I'm just going to I'm going to put two cells so it doesn't end up with that wide cell which messes up things to the right and left margin of error and then we're going to have the lower x bar and then the upper x bar and then we're going to have the uh, normal curve probability and then i'm just going to call this p of x bar so we'll talk about what these mean as we go. I'm gonna select all of these, make them our header, home tab, font group, we'll make this black, 
white for the header. Let's center it, alignment and center. I'm gonna select this one over, these two over here. Let's select all of them and just double click to get a baseline on how wide they have to be. So that's okay, the end needs to be a little bit wider than that. So the end represents the sample size. So how large is the sample? So let's imagine we go from 25, a sample of 25 to 75 to 250 to 350 to 1000. Now you would think that the, the, the largeness, how big the sample is would be proportional to the actual population size but remember that relationship isn't kind of exact. Remember, remember the analogy of like tasting soup to see how salty it is. If you have a can of soup, you don't need to taste and you taste how salty it is versus if you have a whole gallon of soup, you don't need to drink you know, a, a large bowl of it uh, in order to see how salty it is, right? You have a similar kind of thing analysis here in terms of how large the sample size has to be uh, with with the size of the population. All right, that said, we're going to then pick up the standard error. Now, in this case, we know the standard deviation of the population. Here's our formula for the standard error. No one notice it's it's going to it has here the sigma, which is usually standard deviation. That's basically what we're looking at. We're looking at the the standard deviation of the x bars which remember there's three standard deviations we can think of the standard deviation of the population the standard deviation of a particular sample and the standard deviation which we often don't actually calculate but that's what we're imagining to get to as though we took every combination of samples in this case uh sample sizes of 25 and then took the average uh, or, or took the standard deviation of all of those, right? That's going to be the standard deviation that we're approximating with this calculation. The second bit of it is a correction factor, which we don't often need. So I'm just going to do the front side of it here, which is going to be the standard deviation of the population. I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard so I can copy it down, making it absolute, divided by the square root, which we do with a formula, square root uh, here of the square root of n which is going to be here i'm not going to make that absolute closing it up because i want that to copy it down i'm going to say enter so we get 40 and then as i copy this down do 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 do, do we go from uh the standard error is going to get uh smaller as the population goes up which makes kind of sense because we're going to get we're going to get basically less spread as we have uh the larger sample uh not the popul not the population but the sample that we are pulling that's what little n is as that goes up we get a smaller uh, standard error which again basically represents the x bar of all of the different combinations that we would have if we had combinations of 25 from the from the sample size or the population of 34 and then an n or sample size of 75 a sample size of 250 from the population in this case of the 34,000 and so on okay so now let's think of then the margin of error now we said in our data over here that we want it to be basically the two standard deviations and you'll recall that if we go two standard deviations out in a bell-shaped curve if we look at our uh, example over here then you would expect if we go within two standard deviations most of the data is going to be basically in that middle point so that's going to be a common uh, a common width that we might uh, look at in terms of our uh, intervals so we're going to say if the standard error which is basically the standard deviation of the curve that we're going to be putting together of basically the you know the x bars the averages then we can say that we're going to take this 40 uh, times 2 and that would be uh, the two standard deviations for uh, the standard error i'm going to say f4 on the keyboard so if we had a sample size of n the standard error would be uh, 40 and the margin of error would be 80. if i copy that down we could say okay if we had the sample size of 75 the standard error has gone down to 23 therefore uh the margin of error is going to be 46 the margin of error being around that middle point 
that we're looking at, the middle point being, of course, the average of the uh, 799. So if we imagine our curve, the 799 in the middle point, we're looking two standard deviations, and that's what we've correct that we've calculated on both the high end and the low end of the curve. And now we can look. Now we can construct those high ends and low ends. So on uh, the low end, we're going to say this is going to be then equal to the middle point, and then we're going to say minus two standard deviations away, which is basically the standard deviation error times two, which we already calculated at the 80 here. So I'm going to put the 80. I'm going to take this one and say F4 in the keyboard, F4 in the keyboard. So if we look at the lower limit, so now I'm looking over here, looking at the lower bit, and there's going to be that little part over here that's not, that's not included. We're looking at the middle part of the graph. We're going to say then uh, we, have, we have up to uh, 719. If I copy this down, then of course we're starting at the middle point here, 799, with a lower margin of error because we have a smaller uh, standard, uh, uh, standard error, which is standard deviation, and so on and so forth. So here's the lower bit. And then if we go and say, okay, now let's calculate the upper part of the range, which is going to be like this side of the range, right? So we're still saying the center point we're imagining is the 799. And then we're going to say plus the margin of error, which is the uh, distance from that middle point. And let's put this first one is going to be F4 once again uh, for absolute reference and then copy that down. So obviously we have a larger range when we have the sample size of 25, because if we we're taking all combinations of 25, uh, you're going to have a, a, a different standard error or standard deviation and so forth. And so here's going to be the ranges that we come up with that. Now let's think about this. Let's actually type this out uh, in words and practice our Excel formatting. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger and say, what's the probability? So let's type this out and say, this is going to be, I'm going to use some some formatting here for typing text. So let's say that we wanted to say probability of 719 is less than or equal to X bar is less than or equal to 879. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to put first a letter. So I got to put quotes around it because it's text. So I'm going to put quotes around uh, the text item. And then I could say space. And then we want to say do, 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 uh, that actually maybe no space right there. Let's put brackets around it. And then I'm going to put uh, in that quote. So that's going to be the text bit. And then within that, I have to tie that out. So I'm going to put an and. And then I want to be picking up the lower. So I'm going to pick up the lower one here, which I'm just going to click on and say, I want to pick that up, which is going to show up as basically text. And then I'm going to say that has to be and, and it's going to be tied to, so I'm going to say uh, brackets, and then I'm going to put a space, and I want that to be less than or equal to space x bar space less than or equal to space close that up that's all text and then i have to tie it to with an and and then i want the upper which is going to be uh this one and then i'm going to first close that up and look at it and say okay did it do what i wanted to do so i'm missing uh the brackets on the end so i'm going to go on the end of it and say okay it has that that and let's see if i can put then and bracket uh, brackets or quotes and then close up the brackets and quotes and then boom so that looks good i believe and so it says p of x uh so here's the x bar it's x bar is going to be greater to uh, is going to be greater than or equal to or i can say the lower limit 719 is less than or equal to the x bar which is going to be less than or equal to the 879. So then I'm going to copy that down. Let's see if I can copy that down to do it. Now look what it did here. It added decimals. That messes it up. 
So let's go back in here and say, I can fix that by going into these and put round, round. I'm gonna embed that formula in here and then comma, the number of digits, I want it to be zero. Close that up and do the same thing over here. Round and then embed that and then he, go to the end of this one, comma, digits, zero, enter. Same thing, but now when I copy it down, it should round it to whole numbers. And so that looks pretty good. All right, so just to practice our, our formatting in terms of text, you can make these pretty dynamic text formula boxes, but you have to be aware of the rounding situation and the uh, ands, and then when you're gonna put text in, you have to put the quotes around it, right? Which gets a little bit wonky. You gotta keep practicing that. Uh, before it becomes natural. All right, so now let's calculate that. We're going to use our, our norm.dist functions to do this. Now, when we use our norm.dist, it calculates everything under the curve up until the point that we get there if we say it's cumulative. So if I want to get something in the middle here, then I have to calculate up to here and then subtract out that first bit. So we've seen this in prior course or sections. I just want to repeat that. Uh, it looks a little confusing at first, but once you get that concept, then it kind of makes sense, all right? So we're gonna say this is gonna be the norm.dist. We're calculating the area, in essence, under the curve here that's in that middle part of the graph, not including the tails, by first, first calculating up to the higher end, norm.dist up to the higher end, comma, and then the mean is gonna be this one. I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard because I wanna keep that the same, and then comma. The standard deviation is gonna be our standard error. And so I'm gonna say, okay, let's close that. And then that's the upper end. And then I have to subtract out everything up to the lower point. So I'm gonna say that minus the norm.dist of the X on the lower, this one, and then comma, the mean is gonna be this one, F4 in the keyboard to make it absolute so I can copy it down, and then comma, and I want the standard deviation, which is the, stand, which is the standard error. And by the way, I missed the last one. This one, I want it to be a cumulative, therefore a one. I have to put a one there, and I need this one to end off comma with a one. So there's our formula. Let's see what it does, let's say enter, it closes it up, it gives me a one, let's percentify to recognize, home tap, percentify, and then add some decimals. So that's gonna be the middle part of the curve, not including those tails, which are basically, you know, we're talking middle point and then two standard deviations on the top and the bottom, which gives us that around the 95% in that middle bit, right? So I'm gonna copy that down and we should get the same for each of these. So that's what I'm, that's what we're saying about basically when we're thinking about kind of like the confidence uh, situation, even when we, when we go to an, an N of 75, we've got a, a different standard uh, error, which is basically the standard, uh, the, the, the standard deviation of the X bars, all of the means, right? If we had all combinations of 75 samples out of the population of 34, which gives us a different uh, margin of error because we have a larger n, but we can still have have the, the range picking up the two standard deviations, which means that although the shape of the graph is, might be more peaked or wider shaped, we're gonna be picking up that 95 or so in the middle because we went two standard deviations on the top and the lower. Okay, so let's make that blue and bordered. Let's go to the home tab, font group, or make that bordered and blue. Except that bottom pit, I picked up an extra one down here. Let's say, okay. Now we'll make a graph that will have two different curves on it so we can compare different levels of N or sample size. So let's make a skinny column K by going to column number C and going home tab, clipboard, format, paint, and then we're gonna put this over here in column K, and then I'm gonna go to the right until we can see the full table and as much blank space as I could get. I'm gonna label the two graphs just A and B, and I'll select those, make that the header by going to the home tab, font group, black 
white and then center it. And then I'm gonna say this is gonna be given the N. N represents the sample size, you will recall. I'll make this a little bit larger. And then we have the standard errors, which is gonna be the standard error. And that's gonna be pulling in this information given the N. And then we've got the mu. Uh, this is, let's do it this way. Let's go to insert do and go to symbols. And we'll just add that little mu just so we can see the symbol algemagy. I'm gonna click off it and then back into it so it doesn't do any funny formatting. And that's gonna be the, let's let's say this is equal to the aver, average item cost, which was given. So if we have this information, then I'm gonna say we can type in whatever A we want, but I'm gonna be pulling in something from uh, the ones that we calculated over here. So we had the 75, up to the uh, 1000. So we'll say this was seven, let's say that was 25 and the extremes, and this will bring in the N of a thousand. So now I would like to pull in the standard deviation that ties out to those ends. So basically I wanna look at this column and then tell Excel to pick up the proper pr standard deviation from uh, this column, which is gonna be the standard error. By the way, I could add some decimals to make this a little more exact. We add some decimals because it's not exact here uh and if i mean i could add decimals to all of these just to, just so you could see that they're not perfectly even to do it okay so then i can say let's do that let's how can i do that we can use a, a lookup function x lookup is probably the default so i'm going to say this is equal to the x lookup tab and the look up array that we want, we want you to say, hey, look into this array right there, and then comma, the next argument, uh, I'm sorry, the lookup value, lookup value is 25, and then comma, the look up array, we want you to look it up in this area, find that 25 in there, and then comma, the return array, then give me that 40, give me this column, find that 25 and then give me the 40. All right, and then I want this array or these two arrays to remain the same. So I'm gonna say F4, making it absolute F4 and F4 on the arrays. This one uh, is going to be one that I wanna leave because I wanna copy it to the right. So I'm gonna say enter and it gives me that 40 or if I add some decimals, doot, doot, we get uh, 40 evenly. If I copy this across this way though, then it's taking the thousand and returning the 6.232. So if I pull in any other number that's in our table over here, 75, for example, then we get the, the related 23. Now the average cost, we're gonna, we're gonna take the middle point that was given at the 799. So we're gonna imagine that in essence, we have a hypothesis test, right, that we already know that the average should be we're, we're going to say you know that's 799 and we're going to make a range around that number that's what we did basically over here so then i'm going to go home tab uh font group and make this bordered and blue all right and then in order to make my graph notice i calculated a range over here but that's only calculating like without the tails so i'd like to make the entire graph which means I'm gonna make a, a graph range. You, I'm basically gonna use uh, using n equal to 75 because I'm gonna use the standard deviation of basically like the one in the middle, which is gonna give me a, a bit larger, a bit larger deviation. So, so, and then I'm gonna say, I wanna make four standard deviations. I'm gonna take it out for standard deviations. So what does that mean? So I'm gonna say, let's go and make this home tab font group. We'll make this black and then white. So the lower X on the graph, then I'm gonna say is gonna be equal to the middle point. I'll pick it up there, the 799 plus the standard deviation, which I'm gonna use the one at 75 cause it's kind of in the middle. So that's gonna be the standard error, the spread. Actually, this should be minus the standard error. Minus that times 
four standard deviations. So that should include almost all of the data, right? Four is a lo long, almost all of the information. 707, and then the upper X, I'm gonna say same thing. Now I'm gonna take that middle point, which is 799 minus, and then I'm gonna take that same spread, but now on the lower end, and I'm gonna go out times four rather than two to pick up the entire curve. So, so did I say minus here? Oh, this should be plus. This should be plus. So we've got 707 to, to 891. All right, so let's graph, let's graph that out then. I'm gonna make a skinny zero. I'm gonna select this one, home tab, font group, format, paint, skinny zero. And then I'm gonna make an X and this is gonna be P of let's say X and this is for A. And then this is gonna be, do, 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 do. this is gonna be P of X for B. We will make this black and white, home tab, font group, black, white, and center. And then one way I could use the sequence function to copy this down. I could start at 707, 708 and copy it down. Or I can say equals the sequence tab. And then I want to take this minus this plus one. And so that should give me that many numbers, the sequence down I need to go. Comma, number of columns, just one column, comma. The starting point that we want is the lower 707. And then comma, the intervals that we want is just steps of one at a time and then enter and it spills out. The other way you could do that is go 707, 708, select those two and then just copy it down and it should also do that. And that's not too difficult to do because there's not too many numbers, but it goes down to 891 and that's where we wanted it to go. So perfect. So now we're gonna do our norm.dist for each of those X's given the A data and then the B data equals the norm, norm.dist. And we're going to take the x uh, comma and then the mean which was the 799 f4 in the keyboard making an absolute comma the standard deviation which is going to be the standard error the 2309 f4 in the keyboard comma this time we don't want it to be cumulative therefore zero rather than a one just at each point and enter i'm going to percentify that to recognize and then add some decimals and then double click on the fill handle, bringing it down, it comes out to about 100% because we have four standard deviations. Let's do the same for the B equals, and this is going to be norm.dist. The X is the same, comma, the mean is the 799, F4 in the keyboard. So that will stay the same when I copy it down, comma, the standard deviation this time, is the 6.32 uh, and so i'm going to say comma this one is not cumulative therefore we want a zero instead of a one close it up percentify to recognize add some decimals double click to drag it down and k paso something is wrong that's because i didn't i didn't make the standard deviation uh f forward making it absolute Enter, did it totally on purpose. So you can see, double click, dragging it down. I didn't really do it on purpose. You knew that though, but I was just saying, I don't want to like lie or anything here. Completely honest in our screen recordings. I'm going to go to the home tab, font group, make this uh, blue and bordered, select all these, control shift down, and then blue and border that. And then we add our graph. So let's graphifies it graphimize it so now let's just take this whole bit control shift down control backspace to get back up so because i want the graph to be here not at the bottom of the table insert and we have multiple graphs we could use we could use a bar graph we can use an area graph right that's the one we that would be normal if we want the area under the curve but since we have two curves it might be best to do a line graph so now we can have two curves. We can see the line graph uh, pretty pretty clearly. So there's our curve. I'm gonna say, let's get rid of that. We have to add our X's over here because we have the wrong X's down here. Wrong X's, don't get the X's mixed up. You, you called the X by the wrong name, it's over, it's over. 
those X's, man, they'll take you down. So then we're gonna go over here and say, we're gonna, let's go over here and say, we want these X's. Did you forget my name? Dang it, you got the wrong names down here. Okay, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna put this, all right, and then, and then we can add the other one. Let's go to the data and we'll add the second one, add the data. And then this one is this one. And then we'll say, let's take the series and we'll say it's this series, control shift down, control backspace. I'm gonna click on here and then back on it. So it should populate, there it is showing up. That's good. And let's say, okay. And then boom, let's add a, uh, let's add a legend. So now we can see that the two, we can see these two curves. So then of course we can change this, right? So now we can kind of see what happens if I change this from 75 to 25. See, so you could see there it is. So you, you end up with one here with the, when we remember what we're graphing here is basically not, we're not really looking at, at the, 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 the graph of the population because it might not be bell shaped we don't really we don't really know we're not looking at the we're, we're, we're not looking at the graph of the sample data we're looking at the imagine that we took all different combinations of samples of the data of 25 and then and then we're taking the average the, the we're graphing all of those with the mean which the mean would be the same hopefully or close to the, the the mean hopefully of the population and the sample but the standard deviation the spread uh will will be will be you know different right so that and and we can see here that if we have a sample size of 25 you you get this larger uh, spread around uh, that middle point and if we have if we go up to the sample size of 1000 we we get a more peaked uh, distribution the middle points are the same they're both at the 799 and they both have the characteristics of basically a bell-shaped curve meaning if we define two standard deviations on the high and low end we could say around 95 percent of the data you know falls in the middle around that area which is great but of course the shape of the curve is going to be different based on you know uh the size of the sample is the general idea so next time we'll take this concept and then think about our two uh intros into the hypothesis testing concept and the confidence uh intervals concepts now that we have these data